Today we're going to be talking about buying water-damaged property. Andy from Oregon, this is your show. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm your host, James Wise, folks, and this is the show where we work together, right? It's you working directly with me and my team. We help you start, build, grow your real estate portfolio. We give you the education, but then we follow that up with being your boots on the ground. My man, of the hour today is my dude named Andy. He is a pharmacy manager all the way out in Oregon, and we're going to help him buy property here in the Cleveland market where prices are low, prices are cheap, rents are high. And then my team will handle renovations, tenant placement, unclogging toilets. We could do the insurance, the title insurance, the whole nine, right? We do it all, okay? And Andy, this is the second video I've made uh, for you. Your first video, we talked a little bit more about you, your job, the amount of money you're making. And I told you I kind of wanted to shift gears with you a little bit because I thought maybe something else uh, like what we're going to do today would be more productive and profitable for a guy like you uh, than trying to remotely flip houses. But folks, if you want to flip houses, we can help you do that. So what I got for you right now is something a little different, okay? This is a water-damaged house, right? 3615 Denison Avenue, Cleveland, 44109. Just hit the market today. One day on the market, listed at 69900 As far as photos, the listing agents, some cats out of some company called Real Estate Corner, they haven't given us any photos other than the exterior, right? But this is a side-by-side -side duplex, okay? Each unit, three beds, one bath. We actually currently have tenants in there, both paying 700 a month. So this thing brings in 1400 a month currently. That's 16800 Now, truth be told, uh, three ones that are side by sides like this, we could actually get that rent up to eight fifty a unit. So there's definitely some meat on the bone here. But right now we're just gonna go based off of what it's currently bringing in fourteen hundred, right? If you take that fourteen hundred under normal circumstances, I would anticipate approximately seven hundred dollars a month being spent. Now that's not seven hundred every month, right? This is an illustration. Uh, of long-term projections of what this property would average out to, right? So that'd be a net return of $8,400. And that's also calculating for things like capital expenditures, vacancy and non-payment, repairs and maintenance, right? I have eight forty dollars every year being allocated to each of those three things, right? So that's money that goes in your pocket until you need to actually utilize it, right? Like roofs, they last 30 years, cost about seven grand. Hot water tanks last about 15 years, cost a grand to replace. Furnaces cost about three grand to replace. They, lost, they last 30 years, right? These are the types of things that we're talking about when we're talking about capital expenditures. Repairs, you don't do a lot of repairs in between or like why tenants are there, right? Most of your repairs are going to happen at your turnovers, things of that nature. Right. And part of the game, part of investing is a victim motherfuckers. Right. You said YOLO. Right. You said you're interested in, uh, you know, mind risk. Right. Because you're, you're a young guy. You got a lot of W-2 income. Right. So, you know, you buy a house in this neighborhood. We're going to evict some motherfuckers, dog. That's that's going to be part of the game. This is probably like a high C, low D class neighborhood. Uh, so I like to go Section 8. But just so you know, it's right next to a place called Metro Health. They're investing a billion dollars into the the neighborhood. So look into that. I got some links to it in the show notes below, right? So I think we're going to possibly have some appreciation over the long term here. You invest a billion dollars into a low-income neighborhood, good things are going to happen, okay? So all that stuff sounds good thus far, right? But I told you at the beginning of the show, we're talking about water-damaged properties, right? Here is the issue. Here's the scenario we are dealing with, which is why the property is priced so low, right? Like... First of all, 69000 for something like this that could potentially bring in $1,700 a month in rent. That's insane, right? You would obviously, everybody would buy that, okay? Of course, there's going to be a gotcha, y'all. Here's the deal. Here is uh, building code violations from the city, okay? Now, the city went in and they cited all this stuff. And just so you know, just being completely transparent, right? Uh, there's something called the point of sale 
uh, violation system here in the Cleveland market. Pause this video, show notes below. I got a video that explains that. Going for it, I'm assuming y'all know what I'm talking about. Cleveland proper, which is where this city is, or where this property is, the actual city of Cleveland, right? We got the Cleveland market, which y'all come here for, but there's a shit ton of little suburbs and stuff, right? A lot of them have the point of sale, which I explained in that video, okay? Cleveland itself does not have a point of sale, so do not get this confused with the Cleveland point of sale, right? But Cleveland has went in and they've issued several violations on this property. And Andy, if you want a PDF of this, of course, we'll send it to you, right? They've issued all these interior violations, all result, uh, related to water damage, okay? Water damage in the bedroom walls, shit like that, okay? So here's what I'm surmising. The roof is fucked, okay? And it's been leaking for a very long time, and we're dealing with some type of slumlord who has not fixed it, right? Because the city wouldn't know about any of these issues unless the tenants actually complained to the city, right? So I think we got two tenants in this property who are sick and tired of dealing with the slumlord who's not fixing the roof. So because of that, I have placed in here a renovation budget of $20,000. Approximately $7,000 is going to go towards us putting a new roof on this property. And then the remainder, $13,000, is going to go to clear off all of these violations. Because of that, I think we could negotiate the deal uh, much harder and try to pick it up for an even smaller price of $55,000, right? So if we pick it up at fifty-five, dollars put twenty dollars into it to get all the violations clear and do the right thing and actually be a you know a quality real estate investor quality landlord we should be all into it for seventy five thousand but this ain't a charity dog we're gonna make some money on it if we're all in at seventy five thousand if the current tenants stay at their current rent not even talking about turning it over getting to eight fifty tenants and i'm talking we just keep the same tenants in there why wouldn't they stay the slumlord sells the property and somebody reasonable comes in and fixes the the health and safety issues that's that's no problem so at 75k investment that's an 11 2 cap and here's where it gets good right you have a lot of cash you got 165k in the bank it's all fucked up so we're not going to try to get it with a loan up front we're going to try to buy it cash right which is also going to help me try to beat that price of 69 all the way down to 55k right because we know the house is fucked up cash offers are going to be strong we could probably you know snag it away from that slumlord we do that drop 55 to acquire the asset 20 to get the asset where it's supposed to be be reasonable i believe when you go to refinance it i'd probably uh give it at least six months to season right the longer you wait between your initial acquisition time and your refinance time guys the more likely that the appraiser will use will probably give you a better appraiser right the more likely they're going to value what the house is currently like if you if you guys do these appraisals on these burr deals which by the way that's kind of what we're talking about now guys burr it's a burr strategy very popular it's an acronym right it's a b and four r's buy renovate rent refinance repeat right this is essentially what we're doing here's a bird deal right uh i know a lot of you guys are interested in those types of deals and they're very popular right but just so you guys are aware if you buy a property for like 50k and then you want to get it appraised like 25 days later you know you're gonna have a harder time getting that appraisal up to where it should be right like you could probably easily sell it for your target arv but like an appraiser if you just bought it previously like literally like 25 30 days ago the appraiser is going to weigh very heavily on that previous purchase price right so the further away we can get from our original purchase when we purchase it under fair market value guys the less likely that is to weigh on our appraiser so that's food for thought right are you a lender if so Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. But Andy, our target goal, get this mo motherfucker to appraise at 90K. We get this son of a bitch to appraise at 90K, brother. They're going to lend us back 75% of that, meaning they'll give you back 67500 of your original 75K investment, meaning you only end up stuck into this deal with $7,500 of your cash. After you pay off your mortgage, this thing still nets you almost $5,000 a year, which would be like a 66.5% return, right? 66.6, .6, okay? So that, my friend, is the type of stuff I want you to look at, right? Something like this. We're looking at distressed assets, right? We're dealing with stuff that's got a lot of problems, right? A lot of issues. 
We got a slumlord. We got existing tenants. The existing tenants have already complained about the slumlord, went to the city, right? So, you know, it's a whole mess, right? But I've given you a, a very easy and simple path to making a lot of money with this deal, right? If everything goes how I want it to go, that's a 66.5% return, dude. That's awesome. Move on, stack more deals. Now, just so you know, right, it, it's not necessarily guaranteed it's all going to be smooth, right? These tenants are, you know, adversarial to their current landlord. It's fair to say these, these guys probably hate landlords, right? So, you know, it's very possible uh, during the process, like in the first year or so of ownership, maybe we got to evict one of these folks. And if we do that, we're probably looking at like five to seven to, you know, $10,000 or more in additional costs to renovate their unit, right? Because, I mean, they're living in a water damage unit, which we're going to fix that. But I'm sure, like, it's probably not that nice. Why we're in there, we'd probably want to do the kitchens and the baths. But if that happens, cool. We got more meat on the bone because then we'll rent it out to a new Section 8 tenant at the market rent, which is 850 right? So this is the type of stuff that I think would make more sense, right? Your previous video... You talked about flipping some houses, which, you know, we could do that too, right? We could do that, but I, I think stuff like this for the long haul is going to be better for you, right? Because you get that continued cash flow. And now, if this goes as well as uh, projected here, a 66% return, right? That's really good. That's really high. You didn't get 100% of your money back, but a lot of the people telling you guys you're going to get 100% of your money back, dude, that's pie in the sky, right? That In the real world, that's probably not that practical. This is one of the better case scenarios, folks. So this is the type of stuff I think you should be looking at, Andy, because you're a guy with a lot of W-2 income. You can come in. You can pay cash. You don't need that money right now. You can weather the storm. If maybe you take this over and you try to do the work and both these tenants are like, hey, Andy, fucking suck it, bro. Fuck you. We don't want you to fix our house. And they, maybe they're just fucking crazy maniacs and we got to evict them both, right? There's really no way uh, for us to figure that out beforehand, right? I know all, all these investors out there, people are always like, you got to verify this. You got to verify that. Uh, I'm going to cut the BS, guys. There's really no way. Uh, we're going to be able to verify if these people are going to pay you or not, right? Like the seller, what's the seller going to say? We're dealing with the seller. It's a slumlord. We won't even fix the roof, right? I'm sure the seller's going to be like, yeah, man, these tenants are great, right? Why would he tell you they're not? He's trying to sell his property, right? So you have to understand that there's risks with a deal like this, but if it all works out, man, it's going to be a home run. And if it doesn't work out that great, you got to evict these people. Okay, whatever, big deal. Maybe you spend an extra fifteen to $20,000 more than I'm talking about right now but then you end up with a new rental totally renovated put some section 8 tenants in there keep the eviction and the non-payment risks at a bare minimum and we'll be bringing in 1700 a month versus 1400 these are the types of deals i think somebody in your situation should be looking at so uh if you're interested in moving forward with this deal reply to the private link let us know what you want to do if not, just give me your feedback on this video and the previous video and let me know uh, what direction you'd like to see me go in your subsequent videos. And everybody else out there, if you've watched this show today and you're interested in working with me in the same way Andy from Oregon is, go ahead and send us an email, sales at holdenwise.com. Include your phone number. Uh, get that to us within about 24 to 48 hours. My team, we will reach out to you. Uh, set up a time to talk to you, get your wants, your needs, your goals, understand what makes you tick, what you're trying to accomplish, and then we will try to pair that with the appropriate property and action plan here in the Cleveland market. That's all I've got for today's show, folks. New viewers who stumbled upon this, do yourselves a solid and smash that subscribe button because Holton Wise TV is real estate investing made easy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.